Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm SG Wong. First off, I gratefully and humbly acknowledge that I live and create art on Treaty 6 land, the traditional gathering place and home for many Indigenous peoples who live here still and whose languages and histories, culture and art um, still inform all aspects of our life here. I'm grateful to be an immigrant settler on Treaty 6 land. I'm also thrilled to be here today to join in the celebration of Swashbuckling Cats, Nine Lives on the Seven Seas, um, and to read an excerpt from my short story in the anthology, which is called The Comeback Kitty. The queen demands satisfaction. Every one of them had that drilled into their soft little skulls from the very first. When you come to the end of one path, the start of the next requires a visit to the queen. And only once, only if, she deems your gift worthy, will you be released to begin your new life. Kit knew all this, though it did not make being a ghost in the meantime any easier. She shook herself harshly. Now is no time to lose oneself in complaints and regrets. She was this close to securing the treasure she knew would be her best chance at winning the queen's regard. If only Ying, her person, would stop shivering and focus. Kit permitted herself one long-suffering sigh before returning to the business at hand. Ying girl, pay attention. We're down to days now, remember? If you miss your mark, we'll lose our only chance to see me whole again. Sorry, Kitty, it's, it's just so cold out here. Ying shivered and held herself even more tightly, staring balefully at the rigging of the junk across the dock from them. It was a three-master, made for the lower skies and fast freight. Its berth assignment had placed it just low enough from Ying's position that she could see downward onto it. With sails furled, the tall masts cast long shadows against the deck and the single rectangular cabin at its center. A mechanical deck sweeper plodded its way port to starboard over and over, grinding its gears with a silent pop of air. The whirring of its exposed cogs changed to a loud clank for a few cycles before catching their teeth properly once more, accompanied by curses from the off-duty crew. Puffs of steam escaped from the sweeper's rear hatch as it swept around and around and around the few deckhands still setting the air skimmer to rights for the night. I can hear its brushes. Shush, 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 shush. Ying giggled. It's like a funny little dog, but it looks like a giant beetle. Kit bit back her retort, judging it prudent to let the girl get out her nerves with a silliness for now. Ying was no longer the scared orphan peasant girl of three months ago, but she was nonetheless not yet grown. They'd only been in Kamtian City a month. Signing on with a raggedy air skimmer that had seen better days was understandably a new thing for the girl. Kit narrowed her eyes to slits and practiced patience, giving a small swish of her tail now and again. The moon hid behind its monthly veil, an omen sure to augur success, and Kit would take all the good fortune she could amass, however haphazardly it got tossed her way. Enough giggling, Ying. Focus now. The gods would not gift us this junk's proximity if they did not wish us to succeed. We have been hunting for the Sky Lion for weeks, have we not? And just as we sign on with your new captain, with the Sky Pearl, here is our prey birthed only a stone's throw away. I told you this was an auspicious post. Easy for you to say, Kitty, muttered Ying. You're not the junior Kohler. You cannot expect to hire on a senior anything on an air skimmer girl. You did a fine job at Master Huey's warehouse, yes, but that's now done and behind us. I told you that position was only one step along our journey. It was never meant to be permanent. We found the information we needed from Master Hui's manifests. We found the sea lion. And now this is the next step. We retrieve the item. Ying made a face. But they were teaching me to read. I liked it. She finished in a sulk. Hush now, no more complaining. 
If you enact my plan to completion, you shall learn to read and more. You shall become a true adventurer, Ying, free as any of those pirates in your beloved tales. Save your strength now. Be disciplined and we will succeed. The night stretched on and the birds around them slowly grew steadily quieter. At her perch in the shadows below the forebow, her legs and arms wrapped securely around one of the thick anchor cables, Ying kept sullenly silent, while Kit stayed vigilant for them both. Finally, the single guard on the deck below them propped herself up against the center cabin forewall and dropped into a doze, one hand on her cutlass. The guard would be thus until the water clock struck two, signaling the watch's end. Or so Kit had overheard earlier in the night as she floated in and out and around the portholes of the Sky Lion, gleaning information like a fisher netting bright silver prey, plotting and planning. Quickly now, girl. The crew sleeps in that cabin there. The deck's clear save for the one asleep on duty. Check your glider gear. We go now. You promise they're asleep, Kitty? Ying's voice shrank. I'm frightened. I promise, Ying. Just as Kitty trusts you to be strong and agile, you must trust Kitty to take care of you. Ying sniffled one last time, the motion sending the cable swaying in the air. She bit her lip, guilt written across the broad plains of her begrimed face. Then she hoisted her thin body off the cable and let herself fall, unfurling her purloined silk wings with an outward flick of her arms. That's the excerpt. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy all the stories in this really wonderful and fun anthology. Um, thank you so much to Rhonda Parrish, editor extraordinaire, and to Taiki Books for putting this project together. And um, thanks to my fellow contributors for making something so wonderful and fun. I hope everyone enjoys it. I hope you enjoy today's festivities. And thanks so much for joining us again. Please stay safe. And we'll see you again.